G'day. Welcome to Wine for the People. My name is Noah, one of the many hosts of Wine for the People. I'm a Wasset diploma student. I work for Unico Zello. And we're going to be doing a bit of a deep dive today on a variety known as Grenache, also known as Ganacha. Grenache is a grape variety with a personality as rich as its flavours. A versatile red grape with a long and storied history. Its influences spread to wine regions all around the world. From its beginnings to its unique winemaking styles and its delightful flavors, it continues to captivate wine enthusiasts with its charm and particularly its versatility. Despite it being commonly associated with France, Grenache is thought to have originated in Northern Spain around the commune of Aragon. No relation to Viggo Morenstein or his iconic portrayal of that character or even the mid 2000s young adult book series. The grape quickly gained popularity in Spain and under the rule of the crown of Aragon, who ruled over Eastern Spain and spread across the Mediterranean to other regions under its control, namely Sardinia and Southern France and the Roussillon and eventually through the Rhone Valley. Uh, despite not being indigenous to the Rhone, it has become particularly synonymous with the region, particularly in Chateau Neuf de Pape, which literally translates to the Pope's new castle. And it's no, it's not another entry into the Emperor's New Groove anthology. In Chateau Neuf de Pop, it now is an appellated variety and commands some of the highest prices for the grape globally. Grenache is absolutely a big fan of the sun and it's always basically trying to get a tan. So it's no surprise that it thrives in these warm and sunny climates. It's what we call actually an isohydric plant where it's able to stay healthy when it's got heaps of water availability and also when it doesn't have much to go on, when it's very, very thirsty. And that's when the variety tends to produce the best wines, when the soil is free draining and the climate is warm and dry, making it perfect for Southern France, Sardinia, and of course its home nation, uh, Spain. Spain, its birthplace continues to produce exceptional Ganache wines in regions like Rioja, Priora, Navarra, but it didn't stop there. It spread its tendrils all across the globe, making itself at home in places like Southern France, the aforementioned, uh, in Australia, where we are now, and in the United States. Australia's McLaren Vale and Barossa Valley are like tropical resorts for Grenache, providing it the warm and sunny climate that it craves. It originally was used as a key part of the country's rich history of fortified wine, but it's shifted to dry wine styles as taste has changed over the last century. Australian examples bursts with vibrant fruitiness, and the Barossa Valley is actually home to the world's oldest vines. And thank you, South Australian government, for your intense and rigorous biosecurity laws for keeping us phylloxera free. Meanwhile, in Italy, it goes by the name Cananao and hangs out in Sardinia, where it oozes rustic charm. The United States, particularly California and Washington state, have welcomed the variety with open arms and it loves the dry conditions in California. There's no doubt that the variety is a globetrotter. It's thriving in a wide range of regions and in a wide range of styles, known from rustic to, to rosé, from juicy to jammy. Known for its really intense red berry flavors, uh, strawberries, raspberries, cherries, good supporting blue and purple fruits. And to top it all off, there's often a, a sweet spiced peppery component thing like uh, nutmeg and cinnamon, but also some Campari-like bitter citrus peels too. Um, but if you're like us and you really love to flex and be able to spot it in a blind tasting, these are the real structural components you need to know to identify it in a lineup. If it's got low to medium acidity and low to medium tannin, that's a good way to go. But if it feels really medium bodied and like relatively refreshing, but it also has a bit of heat to it, your chest is all warm, it's probably got high alcohol and that generally goes Grenache. And there is a stack of Grenaches that you can purchase all over the world that showcase the history and diversity and the styles of the variety. If you're looking for the oldest vines in the world, try Cirillo's 1850 ancestor vine from the Verossa Valley. The vines are planted in 1848 and it's actually quite a modest price for vines that old, um, but they also have their, the Vincent, which is a really good value for money buy. For a benchmark Chateau Neuf de Pop, uh, Iguigal is a great person to purchase from for any kind of benchmark styles from the Southern Rhone, uh, but it's as premium price as you'd expect. But if you're looking for something cult classic and one that you want to spend a pretty penny on, try Terroir à Limits Le Mines uh, from Priorat, known for a niche mutation of Grenache, actually known as Grenache Peluda, which literally translates to hairy Grenache. Uh, but again, it's going to cost you a pretty penny. Grenache is a versatile 
variety, which is likely why it's become so popular and beloved variety all across the world. And it's getting even more and more popular amongst wine drinkers and winemakers alike, especially as we see a rise in average temperatures and arid conditions across the globe due to climate change. And that'll about do it. That's our quick little wrap up on Grenache. Did you like it? Do you like Grenache? Do you not like Grenache? What are your favorite examples of Grenache? Did you like this kind of deep dive component that we're doing? Uh, let us know in the comments below and we might keep doing them. Um, until next time, see you later.